Are you a Boba Fett fan? Interested in making his helm? Join me today as we 3D print his helmet. See you guys inside. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video we are going to make Boba Fett's helmet. This was a really good print. Uh, the file maker makes an awesome file and I couldn't not turn it away, especially after the last episode of The Mandalorian at the end cut scene and seeing that there's going to be a book of Boba Fett. I had to step in and uh, add it to my collection. And this file maker did a really awesome thing. He made two versions of the helmet, one with the dent, one without the dent. So kind of really cool. It's a great fit. All the part, everything here is 3D printed. The stock, all of it. And I discussed some of the things that you need to keep attention to the stock here later on in the video. So let's hop over to the computer and get this thing sliced and get this thing up on the printer. So I did have some failures with this one um, due to power failure and trying some different filament. I went up going back to my usual Inland PLA Plus and got it done nice and smoothly. But <clears throat> the helmet main piece was printed on a CR10 V2. The rest of the parts, the ear parts, the stock, all that stuff was printed on an Ender 3. So Let's hop over to the computer, get this done. And before we do that though, if you're liking the content you see, you like seeing this kind of stuff on the channel, hit that subscribe button, join the crew here as we keep going through making new, finding new models to print and teaching you how to get them printed and get them out there on your printer. Leave a comment down below if you got any questions about 3D printing, making models, any kinds of that stuff, leave those comments down below. And it would really help me out if you'd share this with your friends, family. Also, anybody you know doing 3D printing, help grow the channel, I really appreciate it. So let's get this thing sliced. All right, so here we are, Boba Fett. So, I love the Mandalorian helmet. I love the differences in Boba Fett's helmet as well uh, between Din Djaro's and Boba's. So, especially some of the iconic details, and this file did a really good job of showing these, is I love the dent. The dent was a big deal for me because he actually has a file in here to make it without the dent too, but the dent was a big deal. Uh, and he did such a great job. Chris, the prop guy, made this file. He did such a great job in making it. I just loved looking at it. Getting it ready to print was so simple. Making the parts, everything fits together. You can 3D print the entire helmet, which is just awesome. And that's what exactly what we're going to do. You can see he added it without the helmet, without the dent. But, I mean, come on. That comes goes all the way back to the... To, uh, the Attack of the Clones movie, where we see that dent. So, awesome one, great, just really super simple model. I did have some tweaks that I had to make in the model, but we'll get into that here in a second once we pop over to Kira. Um, I did the main helmet on the CR-10, just because I could print it in one nice print. So let's get, so here's the files. Quick, simple, not a lot of files, but everything you need to make the helmet is here. So first thing, of course, you know, the most important thing is the helmet. Now I did do some adjustment. I wanted to kind of limit how much support I was using. So I did tilt it back. Hello, there we go. So when I tilted it back, it throws off the, the way it sits. But then I did lay flat. And it's gonna take a second because it's calculating the best way to get that to sit flat. And there we go. So what I can do now is come up here, zero it out all the way around. And look at there, it fits. Now I did turn mine. There's a reason why I turned mine is I wanted it to face the camera and it gives it more room. So that's a lot of build space in there, right? Now when I do it, it's gonna put a pillar here of support. So just to kind of give it a little bit more, I did do this, because I wanted to connect the raft. That's the only reason why I did it. So same print settings I always use. This is Inland PLA Black that I use this time. I tried to use the Duramec filament and unfortunately due to weather related issues, power related issues, 
I had several fails in this model and I had one fail caused by a clog, which we all know and love happens in any 3D print that you do. So that's always the risk you run and big projects like this always have big gambles. So infill, oh, I went low, low, low on this one. I did 2%. I wanted to keep it light. I wanted to keep this thing comfortable to go on my head. 100%, this thing was perfect to go on my head. Now, if you're wanting to do this with an Ender 3, it's not gonna fit. But go check out my mesh mixer video on how to do a plane cut. That way you can cut it into smaller pieces and get this to fit on your, on your printer. But this is just kind of the start where we're seeing the helmet. So let's get that slice so you can kind of see how the support fits in. I'm doing support at 80%. Really the key pieces that need support here are right here. This brim needs support. And you'll see that build up. Now, you could flip this over and print it upside down. There's a reason I don't do that because it's gonna put support onto the outside of the helmet. And if that support pulls away and damages any of this, you got a lot of sanding and cleaning where if the support's in here, and yeah, I use a little bit more material, but I don't have to do a bunch of cleanup, that's worth it to me to not have that cleanup. I'll be totally honest about it. But that's just me. Other people, they may not wanna waste the filament. So four day print, I think mine was actually right about six in total. Um, with the multiple two to two to three day four fails. But you'll see it puts in the support right there to keep that brim safe. I added the column so that it would connect this so it, the printer wouldn't knock it off. Now that pillar is not very full on there. So the helmet, I know we're talking a lot about the helmet, but you can see there's not a ton of infill actually being wasted in there. So, and I accidentally hit the support button, so ignore that. But I went with the dent because that's Boba Fett to me growing up. You know, I was, I know I was around when the Return of Jedi, I'm pretty sure I was born when Return of Jedi came out, but that's just kind of one of those things that's kind of dating me a little bit. I, may, I think I was around when the uh, Empire Strikes Back may have come out right before I was born. So <laughs> that's kind of dating me a little bit there, but that's okay. But so ignore those sticking up because those were our boo-boos where we touched it. But that's not all that we have here. So I'm going to clear the build plate. We're going to bring in the rest of it. So we got the left ear piece. Then we got a connector, a camera lens cover that goes onto the eyepiece. Then we've got a full just eyepiece piece. We got one that's hollow. So basically the hollow, that slips in there. Now, if you're gonna do this piece, recommendation of what I wound up doing uh, with a little bit of trial error, kick it down. Just kick it down 91% and it will work fine. And then there's your two options here. One's hollow, one's solid. Um, either one worked, I printed both. The stock, oh, the stock. We'll get to that here in a minute. Then you got your right ear pieces. These you can all print 100%, they'll work fine. Then you got the cap. So you got the cap that will go on here that the stock will go into here. And then this goes up to this and makes the longer piece. That's all fine and great. The stock is where we're gonna go. You can do this, whatever infill you want. Everything worked out great. The stock is where I ran into a problem. So. I'm gonna clear my build plate and we're gonna talk about the stock real quick before we actually head over to the print. This guy, if I didn't print him at 100% infill, it just kept snapping. So 100% infill, print this by itself, but also what I found that made this work really well, knock it down to 99% as well. Um, that way it will actually move really well within the socket and the end piece will really easily slide onto the end. So that's my recommendation for the stock piece is print that guy at 100% infill. So he is solid and strong. So that's my recommendations and how I went through and did my settings to print the Boba Fett helmet. We'll hop over to the time-lapse here. Hope you guys are enjoying this content. Hit that subscribe button if you are, and let's get over to that time-lapse and see what the printer does. And we'll see you guys after.
right guys, that's it sliced. Uh, sliced, printed. I'm really happy with the final outcome. I've got some sanding to do, some finishing to do here on the back, but, and some sanding all the way around. It's a little bit of filler. Definitely gonna maintain the dent because I think that came out really well. Got some cleanup, some smoothing, different things to do like that. This is kind of soft assembled. Uh, the ear pieces are on, but this part all pops off. The stock and that I can get off and clean up. And I will, down in the description, the same with my original Mandalorian helmet, I'll put the visor in there that I used to make the actual visor. Mine hasn't arrived yet, unfortunately, due to some winter conditions. As I said, it was just slipped on there. So, um, final product, I will glue it on there, but all in all, really good print, really nice detail, really clean. Um, just from the print itself, I really honestly don't have that much cleaning up to do to it other than some on the back here and a little bit of filler to get rid of the print lines. But that's about it. So thank you guys. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next episode.